Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. How was your weekend? Did you have a creative and relaxed time? But the more important question is, are you ready to create the first piece of ephemera for Defemeremba 2023? <laughs> If yes, then welcome to my craft desk. I hope that we will have a really great time together today. I can't wait. I can't wait. I want to make a page for my journal today and I want to add an ephemera piece, which is, I would say, the most traditional ephemera piece that you could imagine for junk journaling. I want to create a tag today. And, of course, I'm going to use our prompt list. If you want to make such a pocket for your prompt list as well, please check out the link in... Ooh. Oh. Very important scrap. Check out the link in the description box. There's a whole blog post on my website about Defemeremba 2023. You can find any information that you need there and you can also find a freebie for this pocket and also other freebies that are available during this wonderful season of the year, Defemeremba. And of course, we are going to use our prompt list today and we are going to create something with this prompt where the number four is because it's December the 4th today. And it says a butterfly and three torn things. <laughs> so we have to include this into our ephemera piece, a butterfly and three torn things. While I'm putting a page together for my binder here you can see i have this binder here it's like not a prepared journal with pages but of course you could use such a journal as well but i'm going to use this binder this year really helpful because you know if you have a fail on your desk then you can easily exchange the pages <laughs> while i'm preparing this page let me quickly tell you what defemoramba is if you are new here Defemoramba is, I mean, the word Defemoramba is a mix out of December and ephemera. And it's all about creating ephemera for your junk journal in December. Defemoramba is a collaboration with my dear friend Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. That means that you are going to get two videos on each day of Defemoramba. One here on my channel and one on her channel. So please make sure... To check out her videos as well the link to her channel if you perhaps don't know her yet is down below in the description box and in the description box there you can also find other helpful information for example my blog post about you know everything about defamoramba you can find the playlist there so that you can also watch what you perhaps have missed if you are new here so I have taken this page here, as you could see. This comes from my Defemoramba 2023 junk journal pages. That's a digital set that you can find in my shop. The link is down below in the description box. And you can also find a matching ephemera pack for this. And I've just folded this in half because I want to use this here as my background for my tag. I want to turn a tag... I mean, my tag that I want to create today into a belly band. And for that, I thought I can put my page in here like this and then put the tag in here. And then I have a belly band and I have something on the back at the same time. For me, it was a little challenge to find out where to make the holes for such a binder. I bought this binder on Amazon and this has six of these rings and uh, my normal punch that I could uh, that I use for normal paper can only make two holes and I was a little bit confused but I found a really easy solution I have taken this piece of a little heavier paper and then I first made two holes with my normal punch just to see how far away from this edge the hole is with a normal punch because you know when you put that in here then you need the information where to put the hole This is approximately one centimeter from this edge to the middle of the hole. I've measured that and then I have made some lines as you can see here. By taking this piece of paper, lining this up with these rings here and then I've just marked 
where the rings are so that I knew where to put my holes. And then I've just taken um, such a tool to make the holes. You could also use a cropper dial um, so that you can easily get the same distance from the edge to the hole. And now I can use this to have a template and then I can just take this and line this up and then I can make my holes. And I can't wait to show you a part of today's idea. I have found out something that is totally a game changer for me. That was an accident, a really, really happy accident. And I thought I want to show you what I have found out. And then I remembered <laughs> that Defamoramba is here and we have all of these videos in December. And I thought, when can I show this thing to you? And I thought, okay, there are two possibilities. One possibility is to show you that in January, for example, <laughs> or later. And then I thought, no, that's not possible. I can't wait to show you what I have found out because that is really something I thought I, I couldn't believe my eyes when I, I saw that. And this thing is about <laughs> making mediums that react with water, waterproof on acetate without any other mediums to seal or something like that. So I'm talking about, so to clarify that, I'm talking about making, for example, distress ink, distress oxide ink, distress spray stain, distress oxide sprays. And I also tried brush rose, yeah, which is like a totally different medium. Waterproof and sprayable, stampable, stencilable, <laughs> is that a word? On acetate, without smearing, without even without drying time. It's magic. It's just magic. And I found that out and I thought, I want to show you how that is possible. It's so easy, but it's just, it's just magic. And I thought, I have to put that in this video. I've checked the prompt list and I thought, okay, which prompt could I use... <laughs> to combine with this technique because I, I couldn't um, sit here with the knowledge about this technique and without you letting know as a, uh, without letting you know about this I'm so excited I can't even talk because I mean normally <laughs> you know if you want to for example stamp on acetate you would need a special ink pad, which is made for stamping on acetate. For example, stays on ink would work, but you would need a special medium yeah, and a special ink pad. And I thought, and I mean, if you want to have multiple colors, then it's also like a budget thing, I would say. But if you have, for example, some oxide ink pads or sprays or inks, ink pads or spray stains or something like that. You can use that. You can make that waterproof on acid. So let's go into that a little later because first of all, we have to prepare our tag. And when I thought about today's project, I thought perhaps some of you are new to junk journaling and I remember the time when I was new to junk journaling and my struggles with proportion. And I always thought, okay, if this is my page and the size of my page, how big has my ephemera to be so that it looks proportional in the end and that it looks nice. So because of that, I made something for you and you can get this as a freebie. So if you have a page print it out and if you have done it like I have done it here just folded it in half and put it into your binder or you have folded it in half and put it into a normal <laughs> normal junk journal with you know a binding with a thread then you would have a half size of your paper right and all of these elements that I have on the freebie here are matching proportion wise 
to such a half page. And I have printed this on relatively thin paper. This is only 110 GSM because I want to back my tag with something. So let's put this aside and let's take a little sturdier material. This is just some leftover thing from, I think, um, food packaging or something like that. So then I'm going to cut this out. And now let's come to the first torn thing on this project. The prompt list says a butterfly and three torn things. So I want to create a background out of this by uh, destroying it. <laughs> I want to tear something off from this background. I'm going to use this clear oh, tape. <laughs> if I can get this off from here, I, I, uh, holy moly. <sighs> it's such a situation where you think, okay, let's take our Effie pillow and let's just <sighs> relax. Just relax. Oh. Oh. that has to be enough <laughs> let's see if it worked <laughs> do you see uh, make yourself such a pillow if you have problems like me <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to take this and now it's relatively important that you um, check how sticky this is Yeah, take a piece of similar paper and press the tape on and um, tear it off so that you can see how sticky this is. Um, I mean, I won't have a problem if my paper tears completely because I have this underneath. And that is the reason um, why I have put this behind. I mean, it makes it sturdier on the one hand, but it gives me the possibility if I now put my tape on here and I tear off too much... If I make a hole into this layer, it wouldn't be a big deal because I have this other material below. I want to have something like, I mean, style-wise, like an advertising column. And this year, of course, we don't throw this away. I think I'm going to use this later as another layer on my tag here. But even if you don't like it on your project here, don't throw this away. This is a really great collage material. So let's put this here. And now this looks relatively boring. So let's take some ink. I'm going to use Distress Oxide Ink Freight Burlap again. You know, I have used that for inking and I think it looks really nice here and I'm going to add that mainly to the white areas here on my tag but I'm also going to blend this a little bit to the image so then I want to stamp to my background because I want to use this door here more like yeah the part of the background and not necessarily as a door yeah so we had a door the day before yesterday so <laughs> we don't necessarily need another door this gorgeous stamp comes from pm artist studio patricia and mariah i'm so in love with them <laughs> i know them for many many years now and it's just a wonderful creative friendship but at the same time they are just so 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 inspirational every time when i for example join one of their live streams i'm like blown away if you are a friend of jelly printing and you don't know them check them out if you want to have some really unique stamps and stencils check out their shop i will link everything that you need to know down below in the description box so by the way they are mother and daughter if you haven't known that yet and that makes it even more special it's just it's just heartwarming they are so cute but um and not but and um they also and that's probably because they are so cute <laughs> they also gave me a special promo code for you so that you can save some money if you want to shop in their shop 
The link is down below in the description box. And the promo code that you can use to save some money um, is also down below in the description box. I want to stamp this to my background, but I want to do two different things. On the first hand, I want to have this really irregular. I don't want to have a really clear impression of this because I want to have this backgroundish. So I thought a good choice could be Distress Paint Freight Burlap. I'm going to use a brayer. So let's press this down here. I will first put one impression here to the middle because my focal point is going to be here later and here and as you can see this turned out really subtle but this is exactly what i wanted to have this gives it like an even more torn look and that was the goal but i also want to include another color if there's a little bit of freight burlap left i don't care i mean here or on my brayer because um, that way my next color, which is weathered wood, gets a little dirty and that is perhaps not so bad. Okay, so when we have that, we can let this dry. And for my focal point, I want to use our little craft buddy Effie. <laughs> and <laughs> as you can guess, I want to give him some wings. I have thought about that very, very long. I mean, then this way the butterfly is also included. I mean, the prompt is a butterfly and three torn things, isn't it? And I thought, okay, that is the most obvious thing you could do, Louisa. I mean, <laughs> I felt a little bit embarrassed because I thought... Uh, yeah, Tifemaremba, you know, creative ideas show the people something new. Why would you um, take a butterfly and use that, you know, in such a traditional and <laughs> perhaps a little bit boring way because it has been done so often. But then I thought, I have to do it. I have to do it because Effie needs wings. He has some own wings. Yeah, On some of the images, you can see that. You can see he has his own wings, but you know, Effie sometimes has those special skills and he can do things that only he can do and no one else. And for that, he sometimes needs butterfly wings because with butterfly wings, you can fly to really special areas and... Also areas that he can't reach with his normal pair of wings. So he needs, he definitely needs butterfly wings. And then I thought with my technique that I want to show you to make those mediums, which are normally not meant to use on acetate. That can't be a sentence, Louisa. That, that, that can't become a sentence. <laughs> I want to show you this technique to make those mediums that react with water waterproof on acetate. And I thought with a butterfly, that's just the perfect example because it looks absolutely amazing. So that's the reason why I want to add wings to Effie. And perhaps you're wondering why he's only half on the printable. That's because I want to put him later on here like so, so that it looks like he's, you know, peeking around this corner. I thought that look could look uh, really nice. And now let's, let's begin with the magic. It's just magic. Please imagine you have a normal piece of acetate, for example, from a packaging or something like that. And you would, for example, take some distress spray stain, oxide spray, distress ink, distress oxide ink, um, distress ref uh, ink refiller or oxide refiller or brush shows. What would happen? You could spritz this here and stare at it, at it, but it will never dry on this. Yeah, This ink here, this spray, it's never going to dry. It can't dry because it's not made to use on an acetate 
like this. It's, it's not mu not meant to use on acetate at all. So that can be a little nerve-wracking because if you want to have like a stamp impression or if you want to stencil or just spray some mediums or splatter on some kind of plastic material, then you can't use all of these mediums yeah that that wouldn't work i mean not only these but all of the others from for example ranger or you couldn't use brushes or anything else that is like ink based so that would mean you would have to buy other mediums for example an ink pad which can be used on acetate for example stays on ink of course would work but for me it's i have only two oh, stays on ink pads and that is this one here jet black for black stamp impressions and i have one brown ink pad from stays on and if i imagine that i i mean even if my budget was big enough if i only imagine the space that it would take me to have several different colors of this i i i'm going crazy even if i only think about that so what if you could take your distress inks oxide inks sprays and make that waterproof and permanent on acetate drum roll i found out how to do that by something like this and you can make those mediums waterproof and permanent this is an overhead transparency this one here is by Photo Paper Direct, and I have to admit, I have only tested this one here from this brand. I have no experience with other overhead transparencies, so if you have another brand of this at home, then please try it out and see if it works. If you want to have exactly this, what I'm using here, I will, of course, link that down below for you in the description box so that you can purchase it on Amazon. I found this out by accident. So let me quickly take... Oh, I had a piece. Let me quickly take this one here. I had a little accident. Uh, perhaps that's um, a tip for you as well. Look, do you see this little smear there? No, you can't see it, but there's, there's a little... Oh, <laughs> I can't show it to you. My camera can't catch it. Can you see this? looks like glue and it is glue it happened to me that when i have taken this out from the package that this here this sticky thing got stuck to the s to this acetate so um i can recommend if you buy something like this um open it and cut this sticky part off so that this can't happen to you but as an example i can um use this even if it's a little ruined here so the important thing is um, that you check the right size that you want to use. This is also meant to put into a printer, into an inkjet printer, so that you can print your own images to this overhead transparency. But only one of the sides of this has this special surface that is meant to print on. On some of those packages, there's an instruction that says that you have a little cut edge and the package says where you have to see this edge to put it into your printer. So, for example, it says on the left top corner you have to have this edge. Then you know how to put it into your printer. But I have to say that those from this package are cut on the wrong side. And I had a problem because I thought, hey, this is relatively weird because I can feel the difference of the back and the front be careful and check if this is on the right edge yeah so the trick to check that is take your finger and now try to listen here you can hear nothing right i mean except a little like, let's do it like this you can hear nothing if you take it or uh, turn it around Do you hear that? This is the uh, side where you have to print on. Where it makes this weird noise. Uh, sounds a little bit like Effie when he wants some food. <laughs> but on the other side you can hear nothing. And on this side where you can hear nothing, your ink from your printer and also this 
will never dry. Yeah, this is just a normal acetate. So make sure if you want to print on this or use this technique or do this technique that I'm showing you now that you have the right side in front of you. But now with this and let's let's just take, um, for example, a stencil. I have just taken out this stencil from my water container. It was laying in there to make sure that these mediums that I had on there before can't dry. But I have taken this wet stencil. I have not dried it. To show you something else, what happens on this acetate, where you perhaps um, in the first moment could think, oh my goodness, I have ruined my project. Look, when water comes to this acetate, it turns into this really weird white. You can see, or can, I can also spritz more water so that you can see that. First it's like clear, but then it gets white, but when this dries... It disappears completely. It gets completely clear again. I mean, as clear as this material is. You can see it's not 100% transparent, but it gets this kind of translucency back when this water has completely dried. But you can now take the stencil, a spray for example, La, 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 la. <laughs> that was vintage photo. This is Evergreen Bow. And then when you lift this up, you have something like this. Looks a little weird. I'm going to take this and turn it around to place it here. Just like this. And let me take something white to put underneath so that you can see that better. <laughs> so you can even make a third generation of this. And now you can do two different things, or three different things. You can let this air dry. You could take a heat tool. Yes, you've heard right. If you do that carefully, you won't melt this acetate. It will perhaps curl a little bit and, and you know, the sides will come up. But when it's um, cool again, it gets relatively flat again as well. If you don't want to wait, you can also take a paper towel and a tiny, tiny little bit of water. Don't make it too wet. I mean, we want to dry this yeah don't make this too wet but don't use a completely dry paper towel because it can happen that it sticks to the acetate because in this stage the acetate is somehow yeah sticky <laughs> so then you can take this off and i would recommend if you have the time to then let this air dry and now you can also Use any other mediums to put on top here. This will not smear anymore. This is water. Can you see? Permanent. It's permanent. <laughs> it's permanent! Yay! And of course, you can also stamp on this. And while I'm doing that... I want to say something where you have to listen really carefully so that um, you don't have the same accident like I had when I found this out. Please, 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 please don't put this kind of acetate to your jelly plate. You will ruin your jelly plate if you put this acetate onto it. If you put that with this surface that we have here you know this um, printable surface onto the jelly plate this will stick to your jelly plate so extremely that you can't get the jelly plate off and you will ruin the jelly plate don't do that yeah please don't do that i have a ruined jelly plate now um i'm a lucky girl because it's only such a small one but that uh, it doesn't work yeah it sticks and then you can't get it off without um destroying the jelly plate if you want to use stamps 
please use rubber stamps. I have tried it out with silicon stamps, those like clear stamps, but also those stick relatively extremely to this material. I haven't ruined my clear stamp, but with rubber, it's absolutely no pro problem. It works perfectly fine. So um, I always like to be on the safe side when I try something like this or find out a new technique. So I'm going to use my rubber stamps and not a clear stamp. This stamp here comes from this set, this time by Tim Holtz and Stamp is Anonymous, Fragments, CMS 368. And I want to show you what happens if you use oxide ink. Um, and let's take let's take what I want to use in a second on my butterfly. That's this color. Because yesterday when I did some other experiments, I found out that black suit reacts differently to other colors. So with the other colors, I made the experience that if you use oxide ink, um, that you can remove the oxidation from the acetate after stamping. And then you get the ink color or something that is really close to the ink color but with black suit it's a little different i don't know why but i want to see if it works here as well i'm going to use some water i spritzed that from relatively far away because i want to have like a loose impression of this stamp that looks at first glance like it didn't work but just wait a little bit just a few seconds then take your spray, uh, your water sprayer. How is this here? This sprayer, yeah, that is the word we said. And then remove it. And yeah, you can see with freight burl. Uh, I'm sorry, with black suit, it's different. Uh, this is now like a fail. It looks really weird. I mean. It tinted the acetate, yes, and that looks really nice because it's not white anymore here. I mean, if you put it to a white paper, yeah, then it's not white, not not it's not transparent anymore. But this is not what I wanted to have, and I think it's a problem of black suit. That black suit is perhaps not like so nice for that. So let's take Fred Burlap. Because what I wanted to show you is what happens with the oxidation. Yeah, and that worked. So um, the problem is that the oxidation won't dry on the acetate. So that means if you take this off, then you have a really loose, I mean, I spritz water to my stamp, yeah? A really loose impression of this here looks really really nice but if you now take water you will see that the oxidation is coming off and the color is going to look a little different here's not so much here's nothing at the moment i think i have already taken that off with my other paper towel in the step before but if you what i'm trying to say is if you want to stamp with oxide inks to such an acetate then just stamp you could also stamp without adding water to the stamp then the stamp impression would get more clear and when you then have the oxidation sitting on top here just take the acetate do it like this spritz some water so that it can can run off from the acetate by itself don't take a paper towel and rub over that while the oxidation is still here if you now rub over this, it's completely permanent. You can do what you want. It's permanent. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you can do what you want. It, you can go over this. It will not smear. Nothing will happen. But if you have the oxidation on here and you would then immediately rub over that, it can happen that the oxidation and a bit of the ink is going to smear. Yeah. So the easiest way is to just... Um, spritz water and la let this excess run off from the acetate by itself. Don't rub over that when the oxidation is still on here. Oh. So <laughs> now uh, what can we do with this information when it comes to today's prompt? 
As you can see, I have this butterfly here on the freebie. And if you don't have an overhead transparency, don't freak out. You can do this anyway. You can get a really, really nice ephemera piece. You can get a really nice butterfly just by changing this idea a little bit. Yeah, You don't necessarily need an acetate layer on your tag today. Um, you can print this on paper and just use this. Take your uh, inks or take your watercolors, your brushes, and just color the butterfly like you want it and just use the paper. If you don't have this overhead transparency and you want to use acetate, you could also color this and then just take a transparency like like an acetate from a packaging and put that over this. It's not the same effect, I know, but it's then also like an acetate layer if you want that. So that means if you don't have such an acetate, where is now my... Oh, here. Then, of course, you can do it differently and have a nice result as well. I have printed the freebie to such a sheet so that I now have my butterfly here on the acetate. I'm going to take this and we are going to make a really cool pattern on here. So, so amazing. And what we can see here is First, this is not completely dry yet. It turned really white. Don't be confused. This gets transparent again when it's dry. Yeah, But this is not visible enough for me. In this case, I think my background is a little bit too busy. But I thought, why don't I take this butterfly from the paper and put this on top so that we get this really nice contrast and that we can see that better. So here we go. Then it looks like this. And before we assemble this whole thing, let's take another, come out, another torn thing because at the moment we only have one torn thing and that's this background. I want to have this on here on the top before I attach this to my page and to be able to imagine better what we are doing here let's take the page I'm going to take a little double-sided tape now to be able to turn this tag into a belly band so then when you have that you can later on take something and put that behind here. And then let's decide if we want to use a piece of this here for the background or not. Yeah, and the, the answer is definitely yes, because this gives another really, really cool addition. But this is relatively big. So let's tear this as well. Oh. I have to use my teeth to do that. And let's tear it here. I want to use this little piece or parts of this. This um, is one of Barbara's scraps and I thought this could match really well. But I want to tear it a little smaller. So this is another torn thing. And I've now glued Effie to the butterfly wings and then to the paper. But this is still, you know, it could be used as a tuck spot later as well at the same time. And then let's see if we can find a little quote because I think it needs something here on the bottom. <laughs> I like, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> Let's also add some splatters. I'm going to use white acrylic paint mixed with water now. Mm, you could also splatter with, I mean, we can do that. Let's see. Um, because here it could have a tiny little bit of the evergreen bow. 
So I'm going to take a little bit of the spray, a paintbrush, because we know this is going to be permanent then here as well. And at the same time, we can layer this. So, oh, that was a little less. I want to have some bigger splatters here, just like this. Look. And then we can additionally splatter with, for example, acrylic paint. So that this now is my finished ephemera for today. And I'm really, really hoping that you like this. And especially, I'm, I'm hoping that you are as amazed by this technique on the transparency as I am. So let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any questions, please let me know. And then let's take our prompt list. Make a little cross here, the number four, because we finished this today. So that we are going to see tomorrow with the prompt salvaged birds. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what we can do with that salvaged birds hm, i'm excited see you tomorrow and have a very very great and creative time and create yourself something beautiful and something that makes you really really happy because that's what it's all about isn't it see you tomorrow bye bye